Logic Pro for iPad is a very cool music creation platform. However, it is version 1.0 software, which means there's a few bugs in there that really grind my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? So in this video, I'm going to show you the two bugs that I find really challenging, how I'm working around them at the moment, and how you can report bugs and feature requests through to Apple for future versions. Yes, because as fun as it is to complain about things, we should actually be being proactive. So if you are finding bugs, you can report them to Apple. I'm going to show you how to do that at the end of this video. And if you've got your own bugs that you're struggling with in Logic Pro, why not let the community know down in the comments below? Because guess what? You're probably not the only one. The first bug that's causing me a few headaches is when you're using a mouse or even the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard. Let's say we go in here and we want to select some audio patches to go onto this track. When we tap, sometimes it'll work, but sometimes nothing happens and it seems to be a little bit inconsistent and yet i'm doing the same taps in the same place on my same keyboard here and sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't which is really quite frustrating now the only fix the only workaround for this is to actually reach up with your finger and tap and you get a 100 percent strike rate when you're tapping with your finger or even your thumb but when you actually tap here sometimes it's going to work and sometimes Okay, now it's always working. But isn't it the way? It's like when you take your car in. There you go. So there you go. I'm tapping. You can see I'm tapping right there on drums. Not working at all. As soon as I tap it, it's working. So unfortunately, the only workaround for this right now is to actually reach up with your finger. I know, like a Neanderthal, and actually tap it with your finger or your thumb. And the second bug that's causing me some problems is when you're using a two-channel interface, something like a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 or a Steinberg UR22, when you come in here and you set up your original uh, inputs here, you can see here, I've got the input here set to input one. That's my microphone input right here. If you want to learn more about this, by the way, heap of tutorials down in the description. So when you're recording a microphone, you want it to be on one of the inputs and mono. Here's the problem. If we actually change the patch here, so let's say we go into an audio patch and we want to find a different voice patch. Hey, it worked that time. Uh, we want to come in here and let's just find a classic vocal and then we go to the choir perhaps. As you change these, what's going to actually happen is when you go back here, and check your inputs, look what's happened. It's actually changed your input to input one and two, and it's converted the channel format to stereo. Now that's because these audio patches are stereo patches, which is fine for the output, but you want your input to remain on input one. So the fix for this, unfortunately, is that pretty much every time you make a change to a vocal patch here, you need to come up to here and actually change it. Let's take one step back there to show you this in more detail. So I've got my vocal set here and I'm noticing that when I play it and when I record, it's only record, it's recording in stereo. It's gonna go on the left and the right, which means it's gonna push it all to the left or the right. No good. So what we do is we tap on this button down here to bring up our fader and we tap here and then we can actually change this and go back to mono and make sure this is on input one. Let's go through and change that patch. So we come over to here, we change it to another one. Let's put it to the choir patch here. And again, if you go to this one here, you can see you get your channel strip there, you go to the top, and again, it's changed it back to stereo. So tap it, change it back to mono, and it should be on input one, or you can change it there. So unfortunately, this is a known bug at the moment in version 1.0 of Logic Pro for iPad. But guess what? We can report this bug, and I suggest that if you're finding bugs, before you start complaining about them, jump in where I'm going to show you right now and report the bug to Apple. So here we are on the apple.com feedback page, and it's pretty simple to report a bug or even a feature request. Yes, you can do that too. So I've put my name, my email address, and my country, and in this drop-down, I've selected broken feature or report a problem. You can go software, hardware, compatibility, or feature request as well. But for a bug, we're going to choose this option. We will give it a subject. So we'll do the audio interface one. So we'll say input changes to stereo on audio interface when 
changing audio patch. So give it a nice description that's gonna say exactly what's happening. So I've added here a very simple comment here about the problem, which is that in Logic Pro for iPad, when a new audio patch is selected, the input for the audio interface, Steinberg UR22C, changes from mono to stereo. I've selected iPad as the version here, and the version of Logic Pro is gonna be 1.0 because that's all we got so far. Now here's where you need to make sure that you select the right iPad OS version that you're running. Now I'm about to upgrade to 17.1, but at the moment I'm on 17.0.3. Should I have tried upgrading to 17.1? And will this bug go away? Probably not, because it's a Logic Pro bug. And the iPad that I'm using here, there are all of the different iPad models. So I've got to have a quick look here and find my model. And here it is, I'm using the 12.9 inch fifth generation. No, I'm using the sixth generation iPad Pro. So I'll select that one there. There's Apple's uh, unsolicited idea submission policy before you submit your feedback. If you're giving Apple an idea and you, you're not sure about how things will work afterwards, read that one before you do. But for a bug fix and a bug report, we'll be all good with this. So now we can hit the submit feedback button and we'll be good to go. And there you go, it lets us know that our feedback has been submitted. It does actually say here, we cannot respond to you personally, but please know that your message has been received and will be reviewed by the Logic Pro team. If we need to follow up with you on your ideas for improving Logic Pro, we will contact you directly. We appreciate your assistance in making Logic Pro better. Logic Pro team from Apple. So you're not going to get a direct response every time you log something here, but it is pretty cool because if enough people log the same things and if uh, you folks go out there right now and if you're having specific issues and you log these, then Apple will know about them. And when they do version 1.01 and eventually version 1.1 and version 2, it's only user feedback that is going to guide and direct them to do all those stability improvements and bug fixes that we all know and love. So once again, if you're having any challenges, please let me know down in the comments. And I know a lot of third-party plugins and third-party apps are currently having challenges with Logic Pro for iPad. And that's a little bit more of a slippery slope because there's kind of two parties involved, but still happy to hear about those. And you can still log any issues that you have. The other thing you can do is reach out to the developer of the app before you jump into forums and before you start leaving reviews on the App Store contact the developer. Almost always you can actually find the name of the developer. Reach out to them. More likely than not, they'll get back to you and be able to try and resolve any issues you may be having. Thanks for watching this one. If you got some value or found it interesting, hit the thumbs up button down below. Don't forget to subscribe and check out all of the links below for a heap of videos all about GarageBand, Logic Pro and creating on your mobile device. I'll see you next time.